All right. So today's video is about um, basically providing a walkthrough for setting up some of the custom commands I wrote for the YAG PDB bot, which stands for this. Um, I really like the custom commands functionality that the bot developer created for this, and I even you know went to the trouble of learning Go the language, the programming language. Well, okay. The subset of Go that this bot uses, which is a fairly limited subset, but still, that was a paradigm shift for me, okay. Um, so anyway, this this is a pretty popular Discord bot, and I've been using it in my own server for a while, and I've been pretty satisfied with, you know, the features it has, and for the features it doesn't have, um, well, that's what the custom commands are for, and I'm a web developer for my job, so, I mean, I should be able to write code, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, I have a repository on um, GitHub with all of the custom commands I've written so far, because I believe in open source, and, um, you know, I wrote those commands for myself, but that doesn't mean that other people can't use them, and that's really why I'm making this video, because, um, they're the setup to get my sort of little custom command system going is a bit involved and yes I could and should and hopefully will write an actual like documentation page for it but that's actually a lot of work and I feel like it's actually easier to just make a video and just talk and show show and tell um, so I mean I guess I'll just quickly open up the doc page for the bot. Um, it's got a custom command section and kind of tells you you got, you got your bot uh, console, admin console in the browser, um, and then different trigger types for the commands and a lot of nice settings that you'll be seeing some of as I walk through setting up my custom commands. Um, Anyway, this is like kind of a complicated topic, and I'm not going to go super deep into the actual commands themselves, but um, this is more about showing somebody who doesn't know how to do this stuff how to take the custom commands I have on my GitHub and do something useful with them in their own servers. Um, the two highly useful commands that are fairly in demand are the um, channel link and message link commands. Um, channel link is basically you um, you type in, I guess I'll show you. This is my own little private server. Um, but you type a channel name somewhere and it creates a link um, so that you can just easily switch between channels. Um, and it's bi-directional, so um, you can go back and forth and back and forth. Anyway, um, it's it's fun times. Um, and then the message link command is, well, it links a message. Um, so if you want to like cross-post something, I'll write something. So I'm being super lazy, but um, if you copy the message link for a message and paste it somewhere, then the bot is going to create this little link message link thing. So it's got the original message content, it's got the link to the message, a timestamp, channel it came from, the user. This actually is a link to the user's profile page. Um, Although I guess it takes you to the browser and then it pulls up the user's card. It's not one of Discord's more polished functionalities, but it's it's a thing. Um, so this is the user who auth authored the message and this is the user who linked the message. And you can also um, quote a message. So basically it's the same, it's the same thing, except 
you also type something out. Um, and it can come before or after the link, it doesn't really matter. The bot's basically just going to grab the link, make the message, and then grab whatever else you typed besides, besides that. Um, so now it says I quoted a message rather than linked a message, um, and it includes my commentary. So it's kind of nice because if you're quoting, um, I don't know, if you're quoting someone like way after the fact because you know you're in a busy server and a lot of messages were sent in the interim and you show up and you scroll up and find something interesting instead of using the built-in quote functionality which doesn't really give you the context for what you're quoting it just gives you what you quoted this is kinda nice because it lets you go to the message that was linked um, so it it's kinda just like a nice to have feature um, that I decided to implement because uh, I thought it would be useful. So anyway, that's those are the two main commands that I guess people want to know about. There's I wrote more than that, but that's kind of like the motivation for this video because somebody asked me to help them set these commands up, and the way my commands are implemented, um, there is a bit of setup you got to do beforehand. You can't just plop the command in and, and go. And the reason for that is that I tried to make my code um, extensible uh, so that I don't have a bunch of hard-coded stuff everywhere. Instead, I have uh, I use the database that the bot makes available. Um, so anyway, the the easiest way to show this is to just make a new test server um, and. just make a new test server and just start from scratch. Um, so here's me and there's nobody else here. Um, actually first thing I want to do is uh, change my nickname because I don't... I, I have my username set to what it is for historical purposes but I don't really ha have people call me Libdis but that's not like it's a mouthful of letters and numbers. So anyway, um, I go by Lena. Um, okay, so let's go into the uh, the YAG uh, console admin console. Um, I need to refresh because I want it to pick up the server I just made. Okay, so I clicked on the, I guess that was kind of quick, let me just go back. So like, I'm logged in to the console, and there's this little server selection drop down here, and these are servers that I'm admin of, and uh, actually that, that one I'm not an admin for. I guess these are servers I'm in that have YAG already in the server, and then these are servers I'm in that I have some kind of rights to. I guess I don't have access, admin access to that one, but um, this plus is for adding the bot to a server and then it pops up this little OAuth2 window. It's like, do you want to add bot to this server? Gotta give it those permissions. And it requires a lot of perms because this bot does a lot of stuff um, and I've been using it without issue. I trust the bot so I'm not worried so I'm just gonna give it all the rights that it wants and do the little recapture and then get the <laughs> get the notification that the bot showed up awesome um okay so now let's pick let's select the demo server that i just made um and somebody's messaging me on facebook i'm not going to respond to that right now um okay so Let's go into core custom commands. Um, and I try to stay organized, so I make groups um, just so that commands that are logically related go into a group. Um, the way I have my repo set up is actually these are the group categories. So um, utility is 
self-explanatory. It's commands that are useful that are not restricted to server admins or mods. Um, commands that anybody should theoretically be able to use. Um, so let's make that category first. And also I'm going to move this over so I don't have to constantly go searching around for stuff. Um, so let's make a new group called utility. And I'm not going to deal with permissions setting up the whitelist roles, blacklist roles, whatever. Not yet. Um, I guess I'll have to make a staff role in a bit, but for starters, we're just gonna we're just gonna make the group. Um, so now we're we're in the utility group, um, and we can make a new custom command. So here is where there is like the initial bootstrapping setup um, for my commands. So by far the most important command. Whoops, not this one. Uh, is this little embed exec command. Um, and the reason this is super, super important is because a lot of my other commands depend on it. Um, as a career programmer, I don't like to copy paste a lot of stuff everywhere. So if I use a piece of code a lot, then I'll make a separate function or separate file for it. Um, the way this bot is set up, you can't really do functions per se, but you can have other custom commands, which I abuse and use them as functions. <laughs> a small caveat about that approach is that if I have like a really complex command that uses a bunch of my other functions or help helper custom commands, um, well, let's just there's uh, limits uh, to how you can use the bot. And I'm a premium user because I just throw money at stuff when I want things to work. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, I should actually, <laughs> I guess these are servers I'm not in anymore. Um, damn, okay. Uh, I have five premium slots I'm donating on Patreon. And this is a bug they still haven't fixed. So there's two slot twos. Um, anyway, we're just one of the slot twos is going to go to the the server I just set up because, like, yeah, I if you if you're if, yeah if you're not a premium user, uh, you might run into usage limit issues. Um, if I can find. Uh, here we go. There's, there's, yeah, there's limitations um, for the commands. This is what I was talking about. Uh, this calls another custom command. So, if I have a complex command that calls other custom commands I wrote, um, there's a limit. Wow, it's only one for non-premium. Oof. Okay, so like, I guess I should just say. If you're not a premium user, my commands might not work for you because they're set up with the expectation that I can call multiple custom commands from one custom command. So um, I guess maybe if you're if you're not a premium user and you aren't interested in um, paying for that, it's incredibly cheap, honestly. Like if you're gonna use this bot, you, you should really consider um, doing it. Just go to Patreon real quick. Just so I can show you, like, that it's not stupid expensive. Um, darn it, I'm not logged in. <sighs> oh my god, you really ugh, gotta do this obnoxious security business. I'm gonna do this from my phone. Um, so just bear with me. <sighs> Click the link. Okay. Let's see if that's going to let me. <sighs> Gotta do this again. Yes, I have a long ass password. Security purposes. Um. Here's Jonas. This is the guy who makes the bot. Um, my membership.
Alright. So for one premium server, it's three dollars a month. That's that's like pretty inexpensive. If you're like a heavy Discord user, um you should just honestly just consider giving this guy money because his bot is great. Oh god, I feel like I'm advertising his, his bot. That's really not my intent. I'm just <sighs> I got sidetracked because I wanted to explain that you can't just use these custom commands without premium for the most part because they're too complicated and they call other custom commands and that goes over the the limit this limit so sorry in advance um, if you're not a premium user and you don't want to be one you should probably stop watching because the rest of this video is gonna assume that you are and that you do have enough slots for custom command usage that is not gonna be an issue for you okay wow I feel like I'm, I've been talking a lot and we haven't even started setting up the commands. I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, let's let's move on. So I was talking about the embed exec command before I got super sidetracked into this actually really important tangent. So um, let's just go ahead and copy it um, into uh, the custom commands under the utility group. Uh, and then this is the this is where you paste the command. This is where the logic goes. So I'm just going to paste that. Um, and yeah, there's even a little bit more setup I need to do first. Actually, the embed color is fine. Delete. This should still work. These are not set in the database yet, but there's default values. The embed color is just going to default to black, and this is going to default to 5. So this command should work right away. Um, wow, okay, this is like hard-coded to my server. <laughs> I need to fix that. That is... That is, wow, that is unprofessional of me. <laughs> um, uh, URL. Exec author not guild. I feel like I need to, I need to fix this command because I didn't even realize that it's just hard coded to my server's website. And you know, like yes, my server is bomb ass and I'm proud of it, but I cannot believe I missed this. I I've, I've like set this up for people one on one in their servers before and I completely, completely slipped on this. So like I'm gonna need to fix that. Um yeah, I'm, I'm going to just go fix that real quick, and you're going to get to watch because, well, um, uh, I, why am I doing this? I already know that category one is global. Um, should it be under... Should it be under global or should it be under admin? I'll put it under global. Uh, server URL. And I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to include this in, into my command because that that really needs to. That needs to be a thing. Actually, what? Let's not. This editor kind of sucks. Let me just be awesome and use a another paid program. Um, okay, so let's um, make a new variable here. <laughs> Server URL. And we're gonna do this.
and I guess the default value should just... Um, is there a way to link to a server page? I'm not sure. Discord doesn't really have like um I'm just going to I'm just going to have it be empty string. <laughs> so if the server URL is not set under the global category ID um in the database, then just use empty string and we're going to replace this hard coded value with <laughs> server URL. <laughs> And hopefully that should um, sort that out. I apologize for my lack of professionalism. Um, I'm going to do a search if there's... Okay, that's the only place. So, hooray for modularizing my, my commands. I only have to change it in one place. I don't have to copy-paste this shit like a million places. Um, okay, or to ndb get... Da -da -da. I think that looks good. Okay. Actually, before I commit, I just need to test it in my own server real quick. <laughs> um, uh, I apologize. I'm like all over the place right now. Um, okay. Custom commands, utility. Uh, this is not bad, exec. Uh oh, did I break something? The bot is also sometimes slow. I'm not really sure how to fix that. Um, I did notice that there's like, there's been performance problems with database reads like, occasionally recently, and sometimes that means a command takes a while to execute. Um, Okay, so this link goes to my website. This one doesn't. I wonder if that means that it's not working. Did I mess this up? Global category ID. Oh, um, I shouldn't be <laughs> converting that to int. That is not required. <laughs> this is probably my problem. Let's just get rid of that. That's what I get for copying something else without thinking about it enough. Um, okay, there we go. I fixed it. Um, See, this is this is why I needed to check my work before committing. Remove that pesky to int because it's not an integer; it's just a string. Um, and I guess these parentheses are probably not required. I'm being very persnickety about my code. Test that one more time. Perfect. All right. Let's commit this and um, go back to me actually demonstrating sh stuff instead of fixing my custom command problems. Um, okay. Commit and push. Bam. Okay, so now, <laughs> now we can actually use this. Um, shut up, cat. 
my cat is meowing at me. Or, she's not meowing, she's like, making annoyed sounds. Don't, not, not gonna deal with that right now, because I'm in the middle of something. Alright, so let's go back to the demo server. Core custom commands. Utility. I already created this command. Um, okay. Um, so another thing I need to change is it defaults, the, the trigger type defaults to command, and then it has you put the trigger. This particular command requires the trigger to be none, because this is not a command a user is intended to run directly. This is basically only used by other commands. So it's like a function or a helper or whatever. Okay, we got that one. Um, we need that one. Uh, another one we need is database, db. This one is very, very, very important. Um, it's kind of looks complicated, but it's it's not. It's it is and it's not. I don't know. I'm not gonna explain how the command works per se. I'm just gonna say you should just use it and just trust that it's gonna do what it's supposed to. And as I'll show you. Okay. I should also mention that in my custom commands code on GitHub, I have a little comment at the beginning of each command, which includes me as the author, um, and then it tells you how to set up the command. So for trigger type, you put command, which is already selected, and you put db for the trigger. Now obviously you could do something else, but um, my custom commands that use each other kind of assume that the naming scheme is as I set it out to be. So if you want to change it to something else, you're going to have to go in and edit other commands that depend on this. So I would recommend to just stick with my naming scheme for better or for worse. Um, now this command is not going to work right off the bat because we have not set up the database yet. Um, this is, I need to think about well, not think about. I have plans to write a custom command that bootstraps the database, um, that sets it all up for you with default values so that you don't have to go through this tedious stuff that I'm about to show you. Um, I haven't gotten around to that, and I don't know when I'm going to get around to it, so I'm not going to assume that it's it's going to be a thing. So we're just going to proceed without it. So, okay, down here, at the end of the command, uh, this executes another command, and this embed exec is a variable that I set somewhere um, up here, and it gets a value from the database um, under the commands category ID, which also needs to be set up. I, I'm going to also have to explain my rationale for how I set up the database, um, because it's not like 100% intuitive. Um, it requires some explanation. So, but anyway, this is not set yet. We're gonna have to manually set that. So we can't use it because this isn't gonna return anything. So down here where we're calling that variable, telling it to execute this custom command, it's not gonna work. So because we did embed exec first, and the YAGPDB admin console uh, basically just sets the custom command IDs in ascending order. So it starts with one, and then whatever next command you make is two, and so on. So this number might be different if you do things in a different order. On, on my own server, the night house, I think this is three, because I was screwing around and I deleted some commands and if you delete a custom command, the ID doesn't become available again, so it'll just not exist. But anyway, for this uh, demonstration, the correct ID for the custom command is one. So we need to we need to temporarily hard code that until we set up the database with the required value. This is the part where we actually go into the server and. Um, the default YAG custom com command, or no, the default YAG, uh, what do you call it, token, trigger, I, I don't remember the, the word for it, prefix, prefix, the default prefix is dash, so um, 
we, we already pasted the db command, so if I just type this, it should work. And it's going to say, well, you didn't provide an operation. Um, and I'm going to have to explain, I guess, how the command works. So, I guess let's just, <sighs> my muscle memory is is using y up thingy. I don't know what this is called. Carrot? It's got a name. I use this in my server because y stands for react pdb and I don't know. I just I got used to this, so I apologize if my muscle memory will <laughs> use that occasionally instead of the built-in default prefix, which you can change um, in the console, but you don't have to. You can stick with dash if if you want. Um, okay, so let's let's start out um, by setting the index of the database. Um, so this this number right here is the user ID that you are setting the database value for. Um, the Yagbot allows you to basically index your values by user ID. So you can set something on your user ID if you're just a regular user. Um, and you'll have your own set of data and a different user ID will have a different set of data. But uh, Discord user IDs are timestamp based. They have this thing called a snowflake format, which uh, I'm not going to get into because I actually don't remember exactly how it works, but it's basically some kind of timestamp, and so those only ever go up because time is time is an illusion. Um, no, but t time moves forward from our uh, Earth-bound perspective, so those numbers only ever go up. There is no actual Discord user by that uses the user ID zero. Those numbers start much higher. Um, I think they start with like the epoch time of whenever Discord was founded, which I think was like 2010. I actually don't know. Look it up if you're curious. I'm I'm not gonna speculate because I I don't know and I don't care enough to look it up. Okay, so the my custom command has this syntax. Uh, there's three different uh, possible operations. There is get, which retrieves a value. There is set, which sets a value. And there is del, short for delete, which deletes a value. So, and then because I was lazy, I kind of did this sort of a hack where you have the operation and you have a colon and then you have the user ID that you're setting the value for. And then the next parameter is just going to be whatever the value you're setting is. Uh, or no, it's a key value pair, my bad. So then you have a key here and then a value here. So for starters, uh, the key we're going to set first is category. Um, and this just explains. This isn't really used by any of the commands. This is just kind of for human reference. So like, what does the user ID zero mean? Like, it's just a number, right? But I'm using this category format, so you you just know the category for for user zero is index. It's gonna set up our database index, and lo and behold, uh, we've got it working. Um, but we're not done. We need to set a bunch of other things first. So, um, next thing we're going to do is, I guess one is going to be global. So like, kind of any sort of global variables you, you are gonna, yeah, you're going to want to use throughout your commands. Um, so the next, next user ID is one. <laughs> um, and category for that is going to be global. And this actually no, never mind. Okay, so cat ca user ID one is category global. Um, I think category two. Is historically, I've done category two or user ID two as um, command IDs. 
commands. Um, I actually don't quite remember. I'm just going to refer to the database entries from my personal server to refresh my memory. Um, okay, yeah, two is commands, one is global, uh, four is roles. I skipped three because in in my server, the night house, I used category three for rules. Um, and so I've just, because I don't want to memorize a different set of numbers for a different server, I'm just going to stick with whatever I set up. So I'm going to skip three because I'm not setting up the rules right now. Um, okay, so ca ca the rules category is user ID 4. Um, so we'll skip 3, uh, db set 4, category roles. And is there anything else? I think that's that's good for now. This is also my cheat sheet, by the way, because I set it up on my own private notes server with like the very, very bare minimum so that there's not a lot of noise for me to scroll through. So, um, so yeah, let's, with the first thing we really should be setting is embed exec, which is under uh, user ID 2 because user ID 2 is commands and that's a command ID so db set 2 uh, that's the name of the command and the ID for it in our little test server is actually ID 1 so that's what I'm going to set for that and we just we're gonna go and just unhard code that because hard coding sucks. Don't do it, except when you have to. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna put that back to exec cc or ugh, embed exec. This I'm just gonna just to avoid typos. I'm just gonna copy the variable name. I'm pretty sure I typed it correctly, but let's just be safe. Okay, so now we don't have it hard-coded anymore. Um, the database command should still work because we have it set now. So uh, I guess let's keep going. I'm just going to set up a few more things that I need. Um, I'm going to want the default avatar for the, um, the channel links or message links or whatever. Sometimes uh, sometimes users don't have an avatar pick and you just want to use a placeholder and I kind of just grabbed this one from Discord itself. Um, is the prefix for the server Y? I don't remember. Let's find out. DB get one default avatar. Nice. Okay. And because I'm, I'm just going to reuse this value. Um, you can set it to whatever you want. It just it needs to be an image of some sort. Um, DB set one default avatar. The naming scheme is important because the commands look for this specific name in the database. Um, so yeah, it needs to be the same. This one doesn't really need, I'll put quotes just to be safe. I don't think that one super needs quotes because it's already a string, but, uh-oh. No. Couldn't find, not now. <laughs> no, shh. Clearly I screwed something up because it did not find it. This is what happens if you do things wrong. Uh, embed exec. 
user ID two value one. What? I did it right though. Oh, I know what I'm missing. Um, I didn't set up the index because I forgot. So let's let's go and fix that real quick. <laughs> Fail. Okay, so the index is supposed to point to stuff. That's the whole point of an index. So it needs to point to the other category IDs, right? So the index needs to know, if I'm looking for the global category, what is the user ID to look for? And it is user ID 1. So I need to, I need to re hard code this real quick because it's not going to work until cat shut up shut up cat okay let me try this again and i also need to do db set i also need to set the commands category commands two and the bot is deciding to lag for unspecified reasons. Cat, I'm trying to make a video. Can you not? Leave me alone. Okay, seriously, come on. Come on, bot. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. The lag is, I've noticed, sometimes up to a minute, but it's really random and unpredictable, and it is frustrating because I'm trying to do this, and there we go. That was that was some serious lag. Okay, so now, now I should be able to unhard code this. And I guess while we're at it, we should. Did I already set category four? I did. Okay. DB set user zero roles to four. Okay, good. I actually fixed it this time. Yay! So I'm gonna retry this co this command because this should work now. Set default avatar and. I want to set the delete trigger delay. It's in my test server or in my private server it's set to 60. Usually it's set to 5 um, just so that the trigger you entered goes away faster but setting it to 60 just allows it to stick around for longer for instructional purposes I guess. Um, anyway let's let's go ahead and set that. That's under the global category. It's called delete trigger delay and setting it to 60 seconds. All right. So that's some really basic stuff out of the way. Um, now for something a little bit more fun. I have a custom command for uh, converting hex codes to integer values. And this is necessary because um, Discord internally encodes colors as the integer value, whereas it's much easier for somebody who's a web developer like me to refer to hex color codes, which uh, go from 0 to F, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. That's, those are um, 16, it's base 16. Um, where f is 15 because it starts at zero. So anyway, let's let's just get that going real quick. And the reason I want to get that going, it will become apparent shortly. Um, and over here on the trigger type, it's trigger type regex, and the trigger itself is this. You want to not include the backticks in there. Um, I should have done regex first. Okay, there we go. Regex and you don't really need to know what this means. Um, this is this represents a hex color code. This is the pound sign and a digit 
0 through 9, or a through f, and there are six of them. Okay, I, I guess I did explain it. And this means start, and this means end. So it's not going to... If you send a hex code as part of a longer message, it's not going to trigger. It'll only trigger if the entirety of the message is a hex code. Um, and uh, I just realized that I guess it probably wouldn't work if the letters are lowercase. This might be another shortcoming of my um, custom command. I wonder if you can do multiple ORs. You know what? We're just going to find out. Let's just save it. Um, and I guess RGB FF. Okay, I guess it's not case sensitive. Thank goodness. So this tells you the integer value of this. Because this is red. FF is the max value. Um, this is the highest digit. And we've got nothing for green and nothing for blue. And the reason I wanted, I wanted this custom command to exist is because uh, if I want to set the embed color um, for my custom commands, I can do that. Uh, let's do that. That's, I think, also under global, which global user ID is 1. Uh, so embed color that. And the bot is lagging again. OK, it didn't lag too badly that time. Notice that unlike the previous commands, which just use the default value of 0, which is black, for the little color bar, I just set the embed color, and now it's using it. Um, you can set it to whatever you want, if you want it to be blue or green. or Basically, you can just use the HTML color picker and then um, figure out what the in integer value is by using that hex to int command. Um, and then copy that and set it in the database. So, hooray! I really like the color red, in case it's not apparent. Um, in, in my little server, I have it set to magenta. Um, but, anyway. Uh, so, that, so that's that. Um, now we can move on to something more interesting. Uh, I mentioned that the channel link and the message link commands are highly demanded and for good reason. So let's see. Oh, we also need to have a staff role. I need to set up a quote-unquote staff role in my little test server. Um, server settings, roles. <laughs> I'm just going to be a little bit silly um, because why not? Because I'm the boss lady. I'm going to give myself that role. Um, I won't do that just yet, but um, because I want to show you how the command works if somebody has a staff role and someone doesn't. So um, Previously, we established that the roles category is 4. So we're going to do db set 4. Um, staff role ID, and um, I need to copy the role ID. Okay, so another feature of YAG is uh, this is a built-in command, list roles. It lists all of the roles in a server. Um, this is nice because it gives me the ID, so I'm just going to grab that. Yoink. Staff role ID is that. Okay, um, I think that's, we already set up the default avatar because I knew that we would need it for this command. We already set the embed color because I knew we would need that. And we also set the delete trigger delay, which we didn't really have to because I've pretty much been setting it, setting a default of five if the database value doesn't exist everywhere that I do this, um, just because it's so common and five is a pretty reasonable value. Um, 
So anyway, enough. W without further ado, we're going to grab this code and put it in a new custom command in the utility category and uh, just uh, we need to set the trigger stuff. So it's a trigger type regex and the trigger value is uh, that. So let's change it to regex and this is, uh, I'll explain this real quick. So when you type a channel name, internally Discord represents it with an ID that is, I guess, cur currently it's at least 17 num digits long, could be longer, that's what the comma allows for higher values. Um, this just means decimal character and this is a less than sign and a greater than sign. Um, and this is a hash. And again, end, start and end. So only if it's in its own message. We don't want to just start spamming links if somebody mentions a message, uh, mentions a channel in a longer message. We want it to be deliberate. They send only the channel name and that triggers the command. Okay, let me breathe. <laughs> So theoretically that should work now. Let's set up a second channel for this demonstration so that we can link from one channel to another. Um, so if I type second channel, it should make a channel link, but we're experiencing the lag again. It's not always like this. I think maybe like at peak times when people are using Discord more often. Uh, there we go. I also need to just, this is going to get super annoying. Uh, notification settings. Okay, so this is what I typed uh, and it made a link and it said a server member has linked to second channel. Click here to move. Um, and this is a bi-directional link as I mentioned or as I showed before. Um, so this message is for somebody who's not staff. Um, if I give myself the staff role this will say a staff member has requested blah blah blah. So let's just do that real quick. Um, same deal, second channel. So now it says a staff member has moved this conversation to second channel. Please go there now. Well, if a staff member tells you to go somewhere, it's it's more serious than just if a server member links to a, a place. So this is hard coded in the command. Um, I suppose it could be modified potentially. Um, I this I'm not like super eager to make this a database value right now because the text is fine I think. Um, there's also oh it's not it's not for this command never mind. Um, okay so anyway th we, we got the command working um, and it only took us I don't even want to look at Logitech capture how long this video has been going. Um, we'll find out when I finish. So Anyway, the the point was to get this command working, and it is now working. So we're going to move on so that this video doesn't become excruciatingly long, and I'm going to set up the message link command, which is the other commonly requested uh, command. I might do more videos later for my other commands, maybe. Um, this one's longer because it has more logic. This one took me longer to implement for that reason. Um, it takes a lot of stuff into account. Um, let's make a new custom command, paste the code, and refer to the trigger. Um, it is a regex trigger, and this is basically a regular expression for a channel link. Discord.com slash channels, and then three seventeen or more digits long numbers. Um, so let's do that. I'm 
pretty sure everything else is already set. We've already got all this stuff in the database, so it should work. Um, okay, let's also make an, a not safe for work channel because this command is smart. Um, actually, I'll be slightly less lazy. Okay, we just made a separate category for not safe for work stuff. Um, so, I gave myself staff. Um, let me just type some message in here. And I'm going to copy the message link and paste it in here. And you see this is what the, the link looks like. It's discordapp.com. Som sometimes it's discord.com because Discord has like been messing with their domain name. Um, channels, this is the server ID, this is the channel ID, and this is the message ID. Um, so if I paste that, we're going to experience more lag because of course the bot is going to do itself a disservice and just show people that it has issues occasionally with performance. Um, this is kind of mostly my fault for using so much database functionality. If if you went in to my commands and hard coded everything, like everything, um, it would probably be faster sometimes. But I just feel like that's more work, and it doesn't always lag. And even when it lags, you just gotta be a little bit patient for it to, there we go. Okay. I already showed you how this command works. Like, I could quote a message also. Um, anyway, it's working. Hooray! Um, there's one thing I didn't mention yet, which is that there's logic in my command for basically not letting server members link not safe for work content out of a not safe for work channel into a safe for work channel. Um, that's that's something that I thought about because, well, if you have a server that allows minors, Discord Terms of Service lets you have people of age 13 or up uh, and up. So you could potentially have a 13-year-old and you could also have an adults-only section um, behind a not safe for work role and somebody maliciously could link, like, say, porn or something. Uh, into a miners channel and that would cause all kinds of problems. So that functionality is disabled for not staff. Now staff staff is allowed to do whatever the fuck they want because if you have them as staff you should probably trust them. If you don't trust your staff you've got bigger problems. <laughs> so anyway um, this is a naughty message. Wink. <laughs> um, so I currently gave myself the staff role, so I should be able to copy this wherever I want. Oh wait, hold on. I forgot to set the channel to not safe for work. Let me fix that. <laughs> okay, let's let's just do that again. Okay, it still worked because I'm staff, but if I am not staff and I paste the message link, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to leave the message link as it is, um, which means if somebody has access to the Not Safe for Work channel, they can just click on it and it'll take them there. Um, but if somebody doesn't have access, then it's not going to work. So this protects minors because it doesn't reproduce the message content in the channel versus if, actually, let me just demonstrate real quick. Um, Let's just upload uh, some kind of sigil. I make a lot of sigils. You probably maybe have seen my other sigil sigil images. Cat, what are you doing? Cat, you're making me want to throttle you right now. I'm almost done with my video. I'll deal with you in a sec. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just going to grab some...
cat is doing things that I don't like. Okay, um, I'm just gonna grab this. This is my pineapple sigil. So I, I I posted this in a not safe for work channel. So I still don't have the staff roll, so it's not gonna do anything. Let me give myself the staff roll back. The the message link command includes attachments and it gives you the links to them also. Um this kind of demonstrates if this was like porn, which it's not, but if it was you would not want this to be able to be... Cat, stop it! You would not want this to be able to be posted in a safe work channel. So, um, that that's the rationale behind that whole thing. So, um, there's probably more stuff I wanted to say, but now I'm like freaking out that my cat is gonna wipe her ass all over my carpet. She's like super old, and she has old kitty problems like poop uh i guess like digestive issues and i don't have the money to like spend thousands of dollars on fixing stuff that isn't really going to be fixed because she's too too old for it to really be fixed um anyway i'm i still like take care of her and stuff like you know feed, food water litter box give her pets and stuff but i don't have like the money for kitty health care um Hell, I barely have the money for my own healthcare, so let's let's not. Anyway, um, there's more commands that I've written that I might go into later, but this video is ridiculously long already. Um, I guess I'll I'll just this one's kind of neat. I'm just gonna do this one real quick. Um, just grabs the user's avatar. Um, Command type avatar, trigger avatar, um, save. If I don't provide a user ID, it's just going to give me my avatar, which is a fancy schmancy animated sigil because, you know, I make a lot of these. These are fun. Um, I wonder if I can get Yag's avatar. should be able to. Oh wow, that is very fancy. Very high def. Very nice. Yag PDB. It's got a little Discord icon. Uh you can also uh specify a different size if you want like a smaller version of it. Oh. Did it? Hmm. It didn't it didn't work for I guess if you don't give it an ID, that, that feature doesn't work. I'm going to have to fix that later. <laughs> that It should work, even if you don't give the ID. Um, but anyway, it can be uh, 3264 or um, basically base 2. 3264, 128. Uh, all the way up to 1024. Um, my cat made a really stinky shit. I can, I s the litter box is way, way away from where I am right now, and I can still smell it. So I need to like, as soon as I finish this video, I need to go clean the poop because it is gross, old kitty poop. She's 16 years old. She's got weird digestive shit. So, oh my god, that smells so terrible. That smells so terrible. Okay. Um, what what else was I gonna say? Um, I can't think straight anymore. The smell is just awful. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop here. I I did what I wanted to, which was demonstrate how to set up the the two different linking commands. I think that's probably good enough for now. So um, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, this incredibly long video, which I'm about to find out how long it was, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this is helpful to you, and I hope that I didn't omit some important details, or I hope I didn't speak too fast. Obviously, you can always fast-forward or rewind as needed. Um, but yeah, 
Thank you for your time.